In this tutorial, I will go through the steps on how to send an email using Gmail's API in Google Cloud Function. This is a request I received from quite many subscribers. The challenge with Google APIs, such as Gmail, Google Sheets, and YouTube, is that they require users to go through the OAuth flow to log into their Google accounts. It took me a few days to find a workaround. Let's see a demo first. When you create a cloud function, it generates a URL that can be used to invoke its execution. This URL allows you to trigger the function via HTTP requests. When I open the URL to trigger the function, it will send an email using Gmail API to my Gmail account. Fortunately, it is not very difficult to set up everything to make it to work. Now let's get started. Navigate to console.cloud.google.com. Go ahead, create a new project if you don't have already have one. Give your cloud projects a name and click Create. Once project is created, click Select Project. Now we need to enable Gmail API. In the navigation menu, navigate to APIs and Services, click Library. Navigate to Gmail API. Enable Gmail API. Now we need to create an OAuth consent screen. You can skip this step if you already have a consent screen created. Each project will only have one OAuth consent screen, so keep that in mind. Click OAuth consent screen. For the user type, choose external, click create. Fill out the required fields for the app information form and click save and continue. Click add or remove scopes and add the Gmail scopes to give the app send emails permission. This is one of the critical steps. If you want to use a Gmail account other than the default account used by the cloud project, click add users and add the Gmail email address you want to use to send emails. At the summary step, review the information to ensure everything is filled correctly and go back to the dashboard. Now we need to create an OAuth account. Click Credentials. On the top, click Create Credentials and choose OAuth Client ID. For the application type, choose Web Application. Give the OAuth account a name. In the Authorize Redirect URI section, click Add URI. Here, I'm going to use Google Developer OAuth Playground URI as the redirect URI. You can use your own if you already have one. Click Create. Click Download JSON and save the client file in your project folder. At this point, we are done setting up Google Cloud Project in a Gmail API. Let's move on to the next step, which is to create the Google Cloud function to send an email using Gmail. Go back to Cloud Console homepage. Now navigate to Cloud Functions. Click Create Function. If you have never created a cloud function in a cloud project, you will be prompt to enable the required APIs. Go ahead, enable the APIs. Give the cloud function a name. For the authentication type, for simplicity reason, choose Allow Unauthenticated Invocations. In the runtime, modify the memory allocation, CPU, and timeout if necessary. In the runtime environment variable, click Add Variable. Create two variables called Client ID and Client Secret showing on the screen. Open the uh, Client Secret file downloaded earlier.
and copy the client ID and client secret values to the environment variables. To bypass the overflow, we need to obtain the access token and refresh token first. Create two more environment variables named access token and refresh token. To generate the access token and refresh token, I'll be using Google OAuth Playground. Open a new tab and navigate to developers.google.com slash OAuth Playground. Click the gear icon and check use your own OAuth credentials. Copy the client ID and client secret from the OAuth client secret file and close the menu. Under step one, select an authorized APIs, select a Gmail API v1. Select the permission scope with send email permission, then click authorize APIs. You will be prompted to sign in to a Gmail account to be used. Choose an account you want to use to send emails. Click continue. Click continue. Click exchange authorization code for tokens. Copy the access token and refresh token to the cloud function environment variables. Click next. You'll be prompted to enable Cloud Run Admin API. Go ahead, click enable. Change runtime to Python. In the main script, copy the code showing on the screen. The uh, refresh credentials function is used to refresh the access token in case if the access token is expired. The send email function is main function also serve as the entry point to send an email. Inside the function, we create a dictionary called token info to load the environment variables to bypass OAuth credentials. To authenticate, we will use the credentials class and pass the required values. Just in case if access token is expired, we can use the refresh credentials function to renew the token. To connect to Gmail API endpoint, use the build function and pass the API name, API version, and credentials to construct a Gmail client instance. Create the variables to store recipient's email, email subject, and email body. Draft an email message using the MIME text function and encode the email using base64. Here for the sender, we can use me in place of the sender's email. Lastly, send the email with the Gmail client instance. Now click the requirements file. Because we are using third-party Python packages, paste the third-party Python packages that need to be installed. Go back to the main script and change the entry point to send email. Click deploy to create the cloud function. Depending on the number of Python packages and code base, the build process may take a few minutes or longer. Once the deployment is finished, click the cloud function URL to trigger the cloud function. If everything is set up correctly, you should see a message Email sent successfully followed by the email ID. And in the email inbox, you should see a new email with subject title cloud email test. And that's everything for this tutorial. I hope you found this video useful. For more tutorials, make sure to subscribe and don't forget to like the video. If you have any questions or topics you would like me to cover in future videos, please leave a comment below. Happy coding and I'll see you in the next video.